playing just like the guy behind him. There's a female. She's not impressed that they're her friend. She, she's not impressed. Oh, come back here. I'm great. I mean, to us, he looks great. Now, he's sort of walking along with them, and that might be part of his problem. Maybe not taking no for an answer. Let's be a little more casual about it. But he gets to the end of his territory. He's got to turn around. Hoping more females come by, but... They're not impressed. They are super big. The females hold females to a really high standard. The females are going to inspect multiple males like this. They're going to walk around through all the territories and really only visit and sit and listen to a few. All right, let, let's take a look at a more successful male. what she's thinking. She is trying to discern whether he is all one. This male is going to display to her hundreds of times. She can judge not just his looks, but she can measure how consistent he is. Does he seem to get tired? Can you hear him from every angle? Can he do it and deal with a fight and come back to you? Something about the male's ability to do this consistently communicates something about their quality. So generations of biologists have been coming out here and making measurements to see what it is about males that make them the one. We measure the things we can measure, but females get a whole picture. They're integrating across a ton of variables. The males who are successful are the ones who come into the season strong and stay strong in the whole thing. So we know that the females are finding the good males. But how do females know which ones they are after being out here for only a few days is really remarkable. And we're still not sure how they do it. So leak formation in say grouch, I've seen the male displays, the male displaying in this video, the male never learns this display, it is wired into the genome. So this is an example of a fixed action pattern. Then other, another example of fixed action patterns are the elaborate courtship display in most of the animals, they do not learn, the mating behavior feeding patterns, the nest building behavior, we have seen the tailor bird, the weaver bird, they do not need any special practice for nest building, any bird, they will just pick uh, the nest material and start building the nest. Then the parental care, the sound, vocalization, the calls, then the songs of cricket, birds and whales, the wing cleaning in insect and birds, the preening part, territoriality and ag aggression in the stickleback, and the European robin males. See, another example is the tailor bird. Tailor bird, what are the steps involved in nest building? If you see, then it uses two large leaves, then it uses the dried grass and the plant fire, and sometimes it uses the silk from the cobweb. So the material to stitch these two leaves is either the silk from the cobweb or the dried grass and the plant fibers. Then for cushioning it uses some plant parts like the cotton and the beak is like a sewing needle. So a tailor bird would bring two leaves together and literally stitch them with the help of long flexible grass or the silk from the cobweb then cushion it with soft grass or cotton and then lay her eggs 
these birds when kept separately from their consonant. Now see this is important. If any tailor bird is kept in a specific separate isolated chamber and it is not having any contact with any member of the same species, this bird will perform the same behavior. It will uh, make the same nest without any learning or watching uh, another tailor bird doing it. This vital information is clearly passed on to them through their genes. Another behavior which is not related to FAP here but is very important with the tailor bird nest is that the plaintive cuckoo mostly parasitizes. This is called as the brood parasitism. If you see this is the nest of common tailor bird but inside is a chick of the plaintive cuckoo. So the common tailor bird nest is brood parasitized by the plaintive cuckoo. This has been recorded by various scientists. So this is not a fixed action pattern. I'm just telling you about the behavior which is related to this nest. Now, how do we differentiate between the innate and the learned behavior? So to distinguish between innate and the learned behavior, experiments are conducted on animals reared in isolation by keeping the individuals away from others from as early age. When they mature, their responses for variety of stimuli are tested and compared with the animals reared normally. Many fishes will perform normal feeding sexual and aggressive behavioral patterns even when reared in isolation. The chaffinch. Chaffinch is a bird. It develops its complete song in its first 12-13 months. If it is reared in soundproof room until the expiry of 13 months, it could not sing normally. The song of this bird about the right length and has the right notes, but the melody is not recognizable because for that it has to love with, live with its form specific, indicating that length and notes of the song are instinctive, that the bird knows how to sing, but the melody is learned. So here, when we bred the bird in isolation, then we come to know which part is innate and which part is learned. In human also, vocalization, that is production of sound inherent. A small baby will cry, will make noise, but to learn language, it will need an external stimulus. So if a child is given an external stimulus in Hindi language, the child will learn Hindi. If the external stimulus is Tamil, the child will learn Tamil. The external stimulus is English, the child will learn English. But the sound, the basic sounds which a baby produces, they are similar and they are innate. Casper Hauser. Animals that are grown under the condition of isolation for study purposes are called as Casper Hauser animals. So this is very important. It's the name Casper Hauser. They are given to those animals which are kept in isolation for study purposes. Now see, this. if you see this image, this is a squirrel and these are ground nuts. And this squirrel will insert this ground nut hole inside the mouth and will break it and then it will chew it. Now when a squirrel after birth was separated from the conspecific and kept into isolation, and when nuts were provided to the squirrel, the squirrel <coughs> performed the same behavioral pattern and was able to break the nuts in the same way as other squirrels do. So experimentally isolated animals never have any experience with the particular situation, but they will still perform behavioral patterns in appropriate situation. Some squirrels were reared in isolation and were never given nuts to handle or to eat, but when such squirrels were given plenty of nuts, they ate them and attempted to bury extra nuts in the ground. Typically like all other squirrels, this is very important, typically like all other squirrels, they were uh, not bred with other squirrels. They were bred in isolation. 
that's why they are called as Casper Hauser animals. So this shows that this is a fixed action pattern that the behavior of this nut cracking, the courtship in peacock, the lake formation in sage grouse, the mating rituals, etc. They are wired into the genome and the organism need not to have any uh, other stimulus or conflict performing them and they learn it from them. So these are, <coughs> this is uh, all about the fixed action pattern. Then in the next lecture we will see the basic features of FAP. Thank you.